gamers, I messed up, but today we're doing the Ottoman build order guide for season 3, fresh out of the oven. So what I messed up is I hosted a game with improved observer replay and apparently you can go caster mode with one player because I don't have an AI. So the UI looks like this, but at least there's clear information at the top. It is what it is. I'll fix it for the next one. What I'm going to be showing you today is one of the best Ottoman builds. Obviously, Ottoman can be played a couple of different ways. Uh, there's the Ottoman build to rush castle into knights. There's the Ottoman build to do uh, two TC and then into either pressure or go castle. And then there's this one that I'm going to be showing you, which is probably the easiest to execute and probably is the best uh, quality wise. You're going to get a lot of free points and we're going to get that Ottoman win rate all the way up. Let's get started. Uh, the way you want to start this build, uh, this is pretty much used against every Civ, maybe not against English because they have longbows, but you can still, but their villagers have longbows, so they're going to be able to defend your, your spearmen. But here we go. So the plan for this build is we're going to do a one base mass archer all in build. If you watch tournaments, you've probably seen this build. I'm just going to quickly give you guys a rundown on how to do it and why we're doing things. So once the game starts, you're instantly going to build a house with one of the villagers and you will send five villagers onto the stone. I'm not going to pay too much attention on the scout. Scout does scout things. It goes, it collects the sheep, the classic. The reason we're getting five uh, villagers on stone is because we want to be building a imperial school, which we need 100 stone because you start with 50. And one thing to note is you should be careful where you're placing them to make sure you have enough space to put a blacksmith and to put all the other production buildings around it. So once you get 50 stone, you're going to return it and then go to the closest uh, little wood here. And the reason for that is as you can see, I have zero wood right now. I just put down the Imperial School. So you need to chop some wood so you have enough wood for lumber camp later and for gold mine. So the best way to do it is just take these five guys and do it straight away. Meanwhile, I'm rallying all the villagers onto the food. And we're going to do two trips of these villagers onto the wood. And like I said, the first 50 wood is going to be for the gold mine and then the other 50 is going to be for a lumber camp later on so might as well get it out of the way now and you're gonna have a total of 10 villagers on food then you're gonna rally three on gold with this military school you're gonna be producing um spearmen it's gonna produce automatically and your goal with these spearmen is no matter what city you play against is first to harass their gold mine because those are usually the exposed resources or if it's a sieve that wants to expand, you can harass gold and then later stone and then delay, you know, whatever they were going for. Either fast castle or they were going for the second TC. You're going to delay that as much as possible and hopefully not lose the spearmen. Now, this will require some kind of response from the opponent, whether like a, like a tower on their gold or stone, or it will require them to make archery range. So even if they make archery range and they push away your spearmen, it's still fine for you because they invested into archery range and archers and you, you know, already delayed whatever they wanted to do. So it worked out. So as you can see on the top, uh, I had 10 on food. I moved one because uh, the sheep, I killed them too closely. So uh, 10 villagers couldn't get on top of them. And now we're going to rally onto the wood line. I'm about to age up, as you can see above. And the moment I have 100 gold uh, mined for a total of 200, I'm instantly going to move the gold villagers and start the landmark. Now, with this build, you want to go for the twin minaret medress, medress, landmark. Uh, and the reason for that is the food gathering rate on these uh, berry bushes are really, really good, and it's going to sustain your economy really, really nicely. Now, uh, one tip uh so when berry spawns on this landmark one is going to spawn here one here one here and one there you always want to be putting this landmark on the bottom side of your tc why because if the opponent harasses you from here your berry bushes are almost next to your tc but if you were to put them on this side then the berry bushes would be here 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 and here so if the opponent goes from above they can kill your villagers very very easily so that's one thing to know 
Number two, this might look like a great thing, the fact that I have berries next to my landmark, so I can use this landmark as a mill as well. But it's actually not good, because what will happen sometimes is because these berries have faster gathering rate, sometimes your villagers will get this berry bush, and instead of going to the next one, they will go to this one, thus kind of ruining your economy a little bit. So that's something to consider and maybe every once in a while if your landmark is close to berry bushes just check that you have villagers on the berry bushes where they're you know the landmark was uh we're gonna be rallying on to the wood now i have uh five on food you should have four i'm gonna remove right one right now so the, what you want to do is have eight on wood and then you're going to build a house first by the way i've been streaming nine hours so as i was recording this my brain just, uh, you know, derped. So what you want to do right now is build a house right here, not a mining camp. And then once you build a house, you're going to build the mining camp and put three villagers on stone. The reason why you want three villagers on stone is not for TC, but to gather enough stone to have uh, for a military school. And you don't only want to get 100 stone, you want to get 200 stone because eventually you will use uh, your second vizier point to get another military school uh, unlocked so you're gonna get 100 stone for the feudal military school and then an extra 100 for the one from the vizier point later oh, no, I'm aging up with four you can also age up with three by the way uh, I prefer four but three is okay as well oh, no, no. and yeah oh, no, no. here I had to speed build a house because I was supply blocked but uh, yeah if you build a house first and then mining oh, yeah. camp you will be okay I promise so uh, let's speed it up. The reason why I have four on food is that's how many you need to sustain villager production. You don't need any more. And now that I have three, we're all good on stone. And uh, now this is where build can kind of deviate a little bit. And some people have different takes and stuff like that. Um, I personally, so some players put three villagers in gold. Um, and then they slowly get the upgrades going, you know, over time. I like to go up to five because you need to get a lot of upgrades. So the point of this build is to stay in feudal and fight your opponent in feudal. So the first thing you need to do is get economic upgrades. Then you need to get blacksmith arrow upgrade for damage, arrow upgrade for um, armor. Then you need to get siege engineering and you need to get a wheelbarrow as well. So that's a lot of gold, and I feel like if you put three on gold, you're gonna be getting those upgrades super, super slow. So I like to go with five. So once I age up, I'm gonna be putting five villagers total um, on gold. I have 10 on wood now, and I'm gonna rally villagers now onto the gold. What I'm building immediately is the moment I have 100 stone, I will build another Imperial School. I'm building a blacksmith, which blacksmith gives increased production rate. So if you put them next to military schools and production buildings, units create faster. And you're going to be building an archery range and already start producing archers. Once your landmark is completed, you're going to want to take these four villagers and put them on the uh, uh, berry bushes from the landmark because you will actually have higher gathering rate. And you want to put all four on the same berry bush because they only respawn once they're completely juiced out. Uh, they don't regenerate otherwise. So, here we go, building the Imperial School. As, I, as you can see, I'm going to keep these three guys on the stone until I have an extra hundred for that uh, Vizier Point Imperial School as well. Um, so once you hit feudal, you want to put both your military schools on sipahis. Why sipahis? Because your main unit production will be archers. So you want to make sipahis to force your opponent to go spearmen. And once they go spearmen, you already have an archer mass, so it's going to work out great. Now, if you are playing against a knight sieve, knight sieve being French and Rus that have uh, access to knights in feudal age, uh, you should be putting military schools on spearmen still and keep it on spearmen because obviously uh, archers against French knights is you know not the best uh, not the best fight for you. So other than that, if you're playing against any other sieve, uh, going sipahi is okay. If you're playing against a sieve like Abbasid or it doesn't matter what sieve you play against, and you see they're massing horses, right? 
they're creating masses and masses of horsemen. You can also switch Imperial Schools to Spearmen as well, nothing wrong with that. Some people will try to defend this push with like a couple of spears for your Sipahis and then they will mass horsemen. In that case, you can switch your Imperial Schools to Spearmen, maybe add a barracks or two, and then be able to produce Spearmen out of there as well. Uh, here we go. So, I have five in gold in a second. And the first upgrade I will be getting is Double Broadaxe, followed up by Wheelbarrow, followed up by plus one weapons, plus one armor, and Siege Engineering. You don't want to rush Siege Engineering too fast because my economy on wood is not enough to support uh, archers and rams, and you don't want to cut unit production, you want to constantly be pumping units. I got 100 stones, so I'm going to move these guys onto the wood line. And now you'll see the moment I have enough gold for an upgrade, I instantly get it. Uh, I'm gonna get a double broad axe right here because we're gonna need a lot of wood for this build. Now, um, in this specific game, I went for four archery ranges. Uh, you only need three archery ranges. Again, I'm tired and sleepy uh, because with blacksmith, that's basically like having four archery ranges because it increases production speed. And what you can also do is, like I said, just add a barracks uh, because you also want to upgrade your spearmen if you're going for any and if you need them, produce a couple of spearmen as well. Now this isn't like the perfect position for this blacksmith. Um, in theory, I should have put it like here because it's big open space, but I have enough, sp I had enough space to, to put every building that I needed. The first vizier point you will be spending is on Mehter. The reason for that is you don't need the sheep, you don't need the extra food because this build does not use a lot of food. Uh, and also the 10% mining speed you don't need right now for anything. So the best thing you can go is for Mechter Imperial uh, or Vizier Point because it gives you movement speed bonus 15% to your units. Which is very very important with this build so you can kite with your archers and uh, just be able to, to outmatch your opponent. The second Vizier point will be used for the bonus Imperial School. The third Vizier point will be used into 25% faster production from Imperial Schools. And then the fourth, fifth, uh, if you get to that point, um, you will most likely, um, like in a heat of the moment, you can get uh, Janissaries to spawn Janissaries even in Feudal. Or you can get the Vizier point in the bottom right that allows you to train Knights or Janissaries from Imperial Schools. but that is only usable if you hit castle. So, both my Imperial Schools, as you can see on Sipahis, um, and from here on out, what I'm gonna be doing, is like I said, getting my upgrades, I'm gonna start Wheelbarrow next, I'm pretty sure. Um, and every building that I need to build, I just use the gold uh, villagers and do that instead. So this archery range that I'm building, the fourth one should be barracks. Just so you guys know. Because uh, you always want to be prepared for the mass horseman switch, right? That's how you counter this, right? So if you just sprinkle in a few spearmen, you'll be in a good position. And these spearmen that I have are the four spearmen from the start. So at this point, you will have three, four spearmen from Imperial Schools, from the Dark Age thing, assuming you haven't lost them. Um, once you get to 15 villagers on wood, you want to start putting villagers onto... You, you can actually go 13 or 14 is fine too. 13, 14, 15 villagers on wood. You're going to be rallying your TC onto the food until you have about 12 or 13 villagers. Okay? So, again, you'll have 5 on gold, 13 to 15 on wood, and then you will rally on food until you have 12, 13 on food. So that's like 7, 8 on sheep, and then 4... Um, no, 8, 9 or sheep, plus 4 on uh, the Twin Minaret Madras. And that will allow you to have constant production of your units, um, constantly be able to, you know, build houses. And once you have that uh, villager amount of food, like I said, 12, 13, you're going to be rallying your TC pretty much for the rest of the game on your wood. And whenever you have like insane amounts of uh, wood, you can always rebalance your economy. Like sometimes you'll lack food. Just take five villagers from wood, put them on food. If you are lacking wood, take a couple of villagers from food, put them on wood. Like don't panic, just, you know, rebalance your economy. Now the reason why uh, 
at this point, which I'm gonna speed up a little bit so the villagers catch up. The reason why we want to uh, start putting again on wood is because 15 villagers on wood with double broad axe and wheelbarrow support three archer ranges production and it supports building houses and you know whatever you need in that moment but you need extra villagers in order to be able to produce rams which is kind of the you know the whole point of this build for you to be aggressive on the map and eventually build rams and try to kill your opponent uh again don't I, this is something i see low level uh, uh players do quite a lot um they go for like this and then they go siege engineering and then they stop making units so they can make a ram. And then they attack with a ram and opponent just mows them down. Because they're not producing units. You need to constantly produce units. If you if you ever ever if you ever have a question, when should I build a ram? When you have enough wood for it. You don't cut unit production in order to make a ram. Okay? Just keep pumping units. Um, and there's always places you can attack like don't attack under TC's There's always like you can either attack the gold you can attack their wood line you can attack their uh, food sources um, You can attack a lot of things um, So yeah Do uh, Mali and javelins not kill this well guys I can make a guide for a build, but I cannot make a guide for all 10 matchups with every single sieve. You kind of have to, you know, uh, implement your own game plan there. So if the opponent is massing javelin throwers, you make another stable or two and you make more sipahis. They go donzos, you got archers, right? So like I said, you got to learn uh, the, the rock, paper, scissors. They go knights, you go spearmen, they go spearmen, you go archers, they go archers, you go sipahis. So, but the main thing is, uh, the, the difference between why this works with Ottomans better than the other sieves is because of the this aura, 15% attack speed and the 15% movement speed. So it allows you to kite your opponents and just your archers have way, 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 way better DPS than other sieves. I guess Delhi with Tower of Victory has really good DPS as well. Um, so you'll be able to if you get into these situations where you have even army with your opponent you should be able to win because uh, the attack speed aura on archers is really really good so yeah um all right uh what else so yeah from this point on like i said uh, you're not going to be using a lot of food uh 12 13 villagers on food and four of them being on the landmark is going to allow you to be able to do this build for like 30 minutes without running out of food and the benefit of this build you will outmass your opponent no matter what civ they play they cannot match two and then later on three imperial schools in feudal plus four production buildings pumping out units no civ can sustain that so you're going to win by just sheer sheer masses now this is what I was talking about earlier. So what happened here is my villagers took this berry, then took this berry, and instead of going to these, because the, the, the normal berries on the map are closer, they went to this one, so now you have lower uh, gathering rate. So this is something that you should kind of keep an eye out if the you know standard berry spawn is close to your um, landmark. But yeah, um, you'll see I'll pause the game at like, I don't know, 11 minutes. There's the second Vizier point, and I'm going to be making Imperial School with it, and also putting it on Sipaki. Again, if you're meeting a lot of horsemen, or if you're playing against the Knight Civ, just put uh, Imperial Schools on Spearmen. So, if you look here, I'm going to pause the game at, let's do 12 minutes just to show you guys oh yeah and eventually by the way i forgot to mention one thing so once i got double broad axe once i got the uh the thing here once i got the wheelbarrow the horticulture so this is the the, the tier one upgrade and once i got uh these two plus each engineering uh i would say you can get these but you don't need five on gold you can just leave one two three on gold and get these eventually because they're not that important i would say this one is pretty good because it will help you quite a bit against horsemen since you are massing um archers so if we look i'm worried the game ends 
Okay, 12 minutes exactly. So I just got supply block. So I'm at 100 supply at 12 minutes. I have 26 villagers on uh, wood right now, 13 on food. And if you look, even though I have 26, you can see in the bottom left, on wood, I still have plenty of food either way um, because I only have 13 villagers there. Now, one thing to know is uh, if you are producing sipahis, for example, against Mali and javelin throwers, or you're producing spearmen, um, spearmen are more expensive than archers. So archers cost 30 food, spearmen cost 60. So if you're playing against a French knight sieve and maybe you have double barracks, you will need uh, more than 12, 13 workers on food. You're gonna need like 15, 16 workers on food. So that's something to to consider because spearmen are more food intensive but right now at this point in the game at 12 minutes like i said i pretty much got every single upgrade and if you look at my army i have 45 archers with 15 percent attack speed 15 percent movement speed oh i have 46 archers um i have eight sipahis four spearmen scout and mechte now the most important thing about this build is pressuring your opponent, not allowing them to get resources, mainly food and whatever you can attack, attack it. Uh, it's very important to have a scout with this army, so try not to lose your scout because you want to make sure you're taking the proper engagements. And the most important unit in this army is Mechter because it gives you two auras that make this build viable. So your opponent will try to snipe it. So you need to be very, very careful. If you aim move with your units, you can always select Mechter and pull it back a little bit so it doesn't die and put it on hold position since it doesn't have auto attack anyway. If you are new to Ottomans or you're losing your Mechters all the time, what you can also do is once you reach Feudal um, or um, you know one or two rounds uh, of military schools later, Instead of producing three Sipahis at the time for military schools, you can use one to produce uh, Mechter the whole time because they take quite a long time to build. They take like two minutes to build. So you will always have a new Mechter coming in case you lose the first one because like I said, that's kind of the whole point of the build. You have this bad boy giving your units an aura. Um, but that's pretty much it. If you do a lot of damage but you can't quite kill your opponent for whatever reason, um, you can always, you know, take like 10 villagers from wood, put them on gold, and then rally more onto the food, and then slowly age up to castle. Um, and then the moment you age up to castle, you know, you would want to upgrade your units, and then start producing knights from your military schools. Maybe add more TCs, whatever your game plan is. But with this amount of villagers on wood, you'll be able to start producing rams, while also having, um, you know, constant army production. So... There it is. That's pretty much it. That is the Ottoman build. This is, like I said, uh, it's like one of the three playstyles you can do right now with Ottomans. This one is very, very popular. If you're interested, I would also suggest if you want to see live games of it, uh, I would suggest checking out uh, some of the uh, Red Bull games where there were Ottomans because pretty much everyone played uh, Ottomans this way in the tournament. And I'm going to show you one of the series that um, this build, or this style, I guess, was executed really, really well. Was Marine Lord versus I Am Magic. So I'm going to try to find that one. Uh, but yeah, Magic played this build against Marine Lord. Marine Lord played French. Magic played Ottoman. And he completely just, like, overwhelmed him with the amount of units he had. Uh, even though French is really good saving feudal, he was not able to sustain just the sheer amount of uh, the units. So let me quickly show you this. So yeah, this is the uh, this is that game. This is from the Red Bull uh, tournament. So you can see Marine Lord, I think in this game went for two TCs. Magic went just one TC, just spamming units the whole time. You can see right there, three archer ranges, barracks, two military schools, and he has a space here for another military school. And he also had four, five on gold. So I guess he, uh, he agrees with me uh, to have that many on gold. It's still not a bad idea to have some Sipahis, by the way, against uh, Knight Sibs because it does force them to go Spears or keep their Knights back to protect their Archers from your Sipahis. So if you look right here, uh, he has more army, less villagers. If we skip a little bit more, you'll see he's just constantly ahead on, um, on army. 
And if you look at his army, it's 14 spears because he's playing against French. He has 10 sipahis and 40 archers. And it's just a very rough unit composition to, to play with. If you have extra APM, you can also use sipahis to raid around and move around and, and attack your opponent. But I'll show you guys what this looks like. Um, it kind of looks like even army supply but if you compare the armies one is way larger than the other and that's kind of the point uh, of this and like I said Ottoman does not use a lot of food uh, to produce their army since a lot of this is free um, so French or any other sieve that, that actually uses resources to produce your units will eventually run out of food and that's kind of your advantage and that's kind of the whole point of this uh, this build anyway if you're watching on YouTube, I hope you guys enjoyed this little guide. Probably the next guide I'll be making is the Malian guide, which I, I really don't know what kind of build I'm going to make because Malian is not in the greatest spot right now. But I'm going to try to get something going. Uh, and then after that, I'll do the other sieves. You know, if something changed for them, for example, HRE, I use uh, quite a lot of double TC opening right now in pretty much every matchup. So I'm probably going to do two TC hre guide but if there's a save that not much has changed i'll probably skip it and but still update you guys if something has changed and then eventually i will be doing the water guides but i gotta figure out how to do that one uh because i don't want to do 10 videos for each sieve because there's only one water map on the ladder that's mediterranean but i do want to do a guide of them so we'll figure it out anyway if you're watching on youtube i want to thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something new. The guides are back. And uh, if you guys are watching on Twitch, I also want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, really appreciate you. Great day today, Twitch gamers. I've been streaming 10 hours and it's time for me to go to bed. So I'll see you Twitch gamers and I'll see you YouTube gamers tomorrow with another video and another sip.